The content on this channel is intended for adult collectors only and not for kids. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It is so cold here lately and it just started snowing today and Dante was out frolicking in the first kind of snow dusting of the year and it's just been so cold in the house so I thought hey why not get Muffin's Christmas sweater out, see if it still fits. Christmas sweater, Christmas sweater. Hey, we both shot the same store. I just love how like the turtleneck here makes all his fluff stick out. Hey, where are you going Christmas cat? Do you love your Christmas sweater? Oh yes, we love our Christmas sweaters. We're so toasty, mm -hmm, toasty. So this is my first Christmas sweater of the season. The friendly folks over at Numbskull Designs actually let me choose my own Christmas sweater um, out of their new line that they have. They have so many new sweaters for this year, like Star Wars, Gremlins, Batman, Rocky, Street Fighter, and loads more. But I just loved the wreath design on the logo and all the little slime at the bottom and the mini slimers. So if you'd like to check them out, links below. And Numskull Designs also sent over a few product samples of their latest product line. And that is the Tubbs figures, these cosplaying ducks. When I first saw these, I was pretty intrigued. I was like, say what? It's like these little duckies, what's this all about? So I kind of wanted to just take a look at them for myself, give them a little review, you know, see what they're all about for myself. So we'll take a look at these guys a little bit more in depth first. And then afterwards, we're gonna discuss, you know, the concept of these figures, these you know, kind of simplistic, officially licensed figures that we see, you know, virtually all over the place. So these are the Tubbs figures, designed and engineered by Numskull Designs. They are officially licensed characters depicting some of your favorite characters from video games, movies, comic books, etc. And yes, they are yellow, rubber-looking duckies, who get into character by putting on some costumes, which is termed as cosplaying. Costume. Play. Cosplay! Numskull has already a few Tubbs lines out there, like Street Fighter, Borderlands 3, Ghostbusters, Skyrim, and more. These guys have detailed sculpts, vibrant paint jobs, and are made out of a hard PVC material. They also come in these display bathtubs with their specific fandom logos on the side. So you can display them out of the tub like this, inside like this, or you can stack them on top of each other. They have these tiny impressions that match up perfectly for the bathtub legs, so they are more stable while stacked. So let's take a look at this gaggle group thing of Ducks, I have actually no clue what a group of ducks is called. Nah, blah, 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 blah. A group of ducks in flight is called a flock. Oh, yeah, obviously. But then a group of ducks not in flight can be referred to as a raft, a team, or a peddling. Let's say a raft, because like they're floating and it's kind of like a raft. So within this raft of duckies, we have two fandoms. We have the entire Lord of the Rings Tubbs collection, which Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm pretty sure it's everyone's favorite movie of all time. And on this side, we have almost the full line of the Spyro the Dragon line. And Spyro the Dragon came out in like the mid to late 90s, I believe. And I believe that this is based on the second video game because this is Ripto's rage. Cause we have Ripto here, we have Alora that was helping Spyro during the video game. And of course, Spyro on the top. So let's take a look at Spyro the dragon first. On one side of the plastic lid, we have his name on the top, the Tubbs logo. And on the other side, we have all the other characters in the Spyro line. And when we pop that off, we see he's actually encased in another plastic protector that he can just pop right out of. It's kind of interesting because when he is actually in his tub, it looks like water in there because the plastic is so shiny. So it kind of gives like a water effect, which is pretty interesting. And also if you want to take out that plastic lining inside, love that vibrant purple with the popping yellow and that expression on his face. It's kind of like the people's eyebrow that I always do. It's like, <gasps> got his little wings here on the sides, golden yellow horns at the top. And there's actually some dragon scale protruding detail on the head here, which is pretty cool. And although it looks like a rubber duck, it's not soft by any means. It's a very kind of hard PVC material and all the protruding features on this guy are very, very robust. Paint application is really nice. I like the spot details around the figure. And also on the bottom, we have that rubber ducky hole with some information on the bottom. 
next up in the Spyro line, we have Spyro's friend and ally, Elora the Fawn. Love the hair on this figure and her leafy green outfit. That's pretty cute. The tip of her nose is colored too as an ode to her fawn species. And actually in some areas, you'll see a few paint splotches here and there, but you know, that's expected with a lot of these mass produced figures for sure. And lastly, in the Spyro line, we have Ripto, one of Spyro's greatest enemies. Really like his clothing detail and his horn there at the top. Unfortunately, he was loose in his tub and his horn tip must have rubbed off a bit of paint inside, but really, yeah, it's no biggie. My favorite thing on this figure though is that gradient effect between the yellow and orange on his face. Okay, and now we come to the Lord of the Rings line. So first up we have Mr. Mr. Frodo, Mr. Frodo Baggins. It's a really bad Sam impression. Frodo Baggins seems to definitely have like a plasticky smell. These guys actually not at all, but this guy's definitely very plasticky, but you know, these mass produced plasticky figures, they all air out their smells eventually. I really like the detail on this one a lot. He's got his little elven brooch there for his cape. He's got the ring and he's holding it with his little wings like this. She's like holding the ring like this. It's a freaking Frodo duck. <laughs> Next up we have Sauron the Dark Lord himself. In all seriousness, I really think this one's gonna be my favorite cause it looks the coolest. What the duck? What the duck is going on here? Look at this. I thought I was impressed with Frodo. Uh-uh, Sauron is an impressive figure. I mean, look at that armor detail. Oh, because it, it sneeze. Uh. It's so interesting to see how they can actually take a character and turn it into a freaking duck, but still maintain that character's appearance with, you know, costumes and such. So in this case, they needed to narrow the duck bill significantly to accommodate the helmet. Next up, we have Gandalf the Grey, who is smoking away on his pipe. First thing that jumps out at me is that hat. I really, really like his hat, especially that texturing on it. It looks very realistic. Um, they do such a great job on the clothing sculpts. And um, I noticed that they do kind of rely on those eyebrow sculpts as well as the eye shapes to really kind of capture the expression of the figure. So in this case, you know, kind of old sleepy smoking Gandalf here. And last up in the Lord of the Rings line, we have Legolas. What do your elf eyes see? <gasps> accessories, he has accessories. Oh, he's got a little notch in the bow and a little, impression here in his hand. And there's a little hole here in his quiver for his arrow. Like look at his hair. It has, you know, braids in it. His clothing is very intricate, his leather belt. So as you can see, these Tubbs figures are pretty detailed. I feel like some of their sculpts are maybe even a little bit more intricate than some of the Funko characters, but there are so many Funkos out there that have absolutely amazing sculpts. Like for example, the Sauron that I have here and the Spyro are pretty awesome Funko figures. Obviously these are much, you know, heavier and girthier than Funko Pops. Funko Pops is generally like 60% head and like a tiny little body. So depending on what Funko Pop you compare it to, they can actually be a little bit taller or a little bit shorter than the Funko Pop. Of course, with the Funko Pops, there are those much larger Funko models and stuff, but we're just comparing kind of the smaller figures here. I don't expect these to float or anything because I feel like these are really top heavy um, because of their large heads and their hairdos. So I know it looks like a rubber duck, but obviously, it's, you know, meant to be a collectible and not really something that you play with in the bathtub. So essentially Tubbs is banking on that Funko Pop craze and Funko Pop model, you know, with that standard base of figures depicting all sorts of pop culture characters. Funko Pops, are huge. They have taken the world by storm. People honestly just can't get enough of them. Things like Funko Pops may not, you know, be your cup of tea, but not everyone has to like and hate what you like and hate. But you can't say that they're ridiculous because Funko Pops have been probably one of the most successful collection lines in history. But me personally, I'm just not that into Funko Pops. I've purchased about three Funko Pops from a garage sale for like a dollar or two. And I purchased these two Funko Pops for the purpose of this review, just to kind of like, you know, see the comparisons um, of these guys and plus, these guys are pretty cool. All my other Funko Pops were gifted from subscribers and family. And I absolutely love these guys because they're from some of my favorite franchises ever. And let's be honest, some of these are pretty cool. But you know, why even get these simplistic looking figures? You know, if you like Sauron, why not get a Sauron figure? If you like Spyro, why get a Spyro Funko figure? And why get a Spyro Tubbs figure? Well, I'll tell you why. Because of ease of availability, 
price, small fandom checklists, and of course the quality of the product itself. I absolutely love Lord of the Rings. I think that Sauron is one of the most badass characters ever, but you know, if I was a teen or a young adult and I wasn't, you know, an avid toy collector, I may actually have a hard time finding a Sauron figure. Maybe I wasn't around when the original line of figures came out. I don't have a credit card or an eBay account, or I don't have, you know, $80 US to buy him. But you know, for about 10 to $15, I can buy a version of Sauron that says, this is Sauron. I like Sauron. I now own Sauron. He's mine. So with officially licensed characters, you know, like this, I don't have to go to eBay, Amazon, or Toy Fairs to, you know, find the original figure. I can find something that is basically a representative of that figure. People like completing collections. People like completing checklists. And if there are, you know, four or 10 figures within a certain movie line, it's satisfying. It feels good to collect them all. And that is something really appealing to people that have a love of these pop culture lines and specific fandoms. And lastly, yes, of course, people like the look of these figures, of course. Some like that normalized, identical look between all the figures that makes their collections, you know, look cohesive. So those are just some of the main reasons why people would find these very simplistic alternatives to the real thing more appealing. And I know that there's a lot of people that absolutely love these kind of figures. There's some people that absolutely hate these kind of figures, you know, but to each their own. But you know, if there's people out there that are looking for, you know, an alternative to that normalized Funko Pop look, and they're getting kind of tired of seeing these Funko Pops everywhere, these Tubbs figures are actually kind of an interesting, unique spin on that whole normalized pop culture line. And you may see these Tubbs figures, you know, pop their head out a little bit more frequently here and there as they acquire more fandoms and branch out into more lines. An amazing use for these ducks um, are actually baby shower gifts or baby shower favors, because normally when a couple's expecting and whatnot, a standard gift is the yellow rubber ducky. But you know, if that couple is into video games, into pop culture, whatever, um, this is actually a really cute gift because this is something that the baby can take pictures with when they're younger. It's really cute for a baby's room. So I will leave a link in my description below to the Numskull store if you're interested in checking out any of these Tubbs figures. They are available at a few different retailers like GameStop, Amazon, and the Geek Store, and I believe they average like $12.99 US each. So in the comments down below, I'd love to know what you all think of these Tubbs figures and which one of these was your favorite that you saw today. And do you think they're a good alternative to Funko Pops? You know, do you actually find them more intriguing or less intriguing than a standard Funko Pop? Or do you think they're just absolutely ridiculous and like, why the heck would they even make that? So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I come up with new videos every week. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay legendary.